Okay, nine black parishioners were killed by a white supremacist mass, sh mass shooter in 2015. During his speech, he made reference to GOP nominee Nikki Haley. He ended it, but I'll take nominee. <laughs> 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 I know it says that, it but... It says that. <laughs> you guys are just messing with Whoopi today. <laughs> I, I'm so glad you see it, too. But the nominee... Nikki Haley's omission of slavery as a cause of the Civil War. But she claims Biden isn't one to talk. Take a look. Let me be clear, for those who don't seem to know, slavery was the cause of the Civil War. There is no negotiation about that. I don't need someone who palled around with segregationists in the 70s and has said racist comments all the way through his career, lecturing me or anyone in South Carolina about what it means to have racism, slavery, or anything related to the Civil War. So, I, are Americans going to vote on a candidate's past comments that we, we have to point out? The Joe has said, yes, I know I stepped in it several times. Here's what I'm doing about it. Here's how I've changed. Or are they going to go with policies they're currently bringing to the table? Well, by all means, let's go after Joe Biden. When you're the, in your own backyard, you say nothing about Trump. We all know he's a racist. I mean, he was yes. endorsed by the KKK. Yes. What more endorsement do you need by David Duke? Yep. He pushed that Bertha conspiracy, which really started his whole campaign mm -hmm. going, mm -hmm. in my yes. opinion. And, of course, his wife agrees with that. Um, he faced discrimination laws back in the, in the 70s. When, the, when she's accusing uh, Biden of discrimination, he would not allow black people to live in his, in his miserable buildings with his name plastered all over it. That's true. He's the racist. Don't go after Biden. Go after your own backyard, Missy. Well, I also think that... Um... They both messed up here because I do think that Nikki Haley, we talked about this, the question about what the Civil, civil War was about is about the easiest thing you could ask. I think my kids could answer that and they're four and seven and whatever. But um, I also think what President Biden did, the comments he made over the years, were also wrong. They're in both but cases. Has back but, but I don't think either Nikki Haley or President Biden are racist. I think they said really inappropriate things, but gone are the days where we turn those missteps into messages and learning. If you truly believe in the cause and what they did was wrong, it is teachable. That's what we do. We don't teach children to not make mistakes or to not mess up. We say, mess up, and then we're going to take that moment and we're going to learn from it. Right now, I think we live in a time in the last six years where we, we can kind of trace where that started, but everyone's outraged. Sometimes it's faux rage. Everyone wants to be a, uh, offended, and we want the second someone messes up, say, we're done with them. Well, that's not even what we're taught in church. Like, it's about grace. It's, it's redemption. It's not where you start. It's where you finish. So I think the whole point here is that both can be wrong, and we can teach from that, and I don't think either one is a racist right now. Well, well we I don't, don't know that, that anyone's calling anyone a racist, and I've never met a racist. They have been calling them racist. Uh, oh, that's oh, unfortunate, because yeah. I've never met a racist, though, that says, hi, I am a racist. So <laughs> it's, I think, difficult to tell that. But I think the bigger question is the one that we should be looking at, is that, you know, we've had the FBI director say that the number one threat to this country is domestic terrorism and white supremacy. Right. So that is what we are talking about. And it's unfortunate that our... Nomin what do you call her, a candidate? A I don't candidate. think she has a chance in, in hell. But, um, <laughs> you know, Nikki Haley, who does not have a good record on race, because in 2015, when she was governor of South, of, of, um, in South Carolina, I was at the eulogy at the AME church when, when President Obama sang Amazing Grace, and it was just this just monumental move, when she was forced to take that Confederate flag down yeah. afterwards. Yeah. But in taking it down, she said that it was about the heritage of South Carolina. But okay? why so she's done that like wrong know, a lot. Let me just ask you a question. Why go after uh, Biden? You're re now running against Trump. You're not running against Biden. Well, I think she was reacting to comments he made about her, but honestly, what stood out to me, not for nothing, at his second major campaign event of 2024, Joe Biden made a point to go after Nikki Haley. And it wasn't that he did talk about Donald Trump as well. I think it speaks to the fact that as much as we all want, think it's a foregone conclusion that it's Trump versus yeah. Biden. No votes have been cast. And I will say this. I'm not going to defend Nikki Haley's slavery comments, and I'm not going to defend past comments Joe Biden has made. But I would way rather choose the battle of ideas that we would have of a candidate Nikki Haley versus a candidate Joe Biden. That's demonstrably better for America. Mm -hmm. And I would also know... Um, well, say I that think again. I... 
I would much Seven. rather us go into 24, 2024 mm -hmm. with Nikki Haley as the GOP nominee discussing policy mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. ideas versus Joe Biden mm -hmm. as the Democratic nominee. It's better for America. We're not going to be wrestling with democracy and basic truths. Well, because but not, Trump doesn't have any policies or ideas. Well, and not for nothing in this. I thought it was an important speech. This is a very kind of sacred ground because of the tragedy that happened there. But Joe Biden was broken up by free Palestine protesters who tried to shut down the event. Right. Yeah. He's got some major issues with a core constituency of young progressives in his party that he's going to have to grab. I'm sorry, that doing point? that at that church was scared, I'm sorry, was, was wrong. Was so I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, people were murdered in that church. And y'all going, and I get the protest, I understand it. But you need to read the room. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was the wrong room to go protesting. It scared and people in you that can't, church. You yeah. can't do that. I, but can I just say to your point, I think that Trump is scared of Nikki Haley because watch yeah. what he said at this other event. Watch this Trump clip. Uh, they asked her about the Civil War. Why did it start? How did it start? She didn't use the word slavery, which was interesting. I don't know that it's, it's going to have an impact, but, you know, I'd say slavery is sort of the obvious answer. It's supposed to, it's supposed to about three paragraphs of She just talked. Nobody knew what she was like. Well, I mean, this guy thinks, he still thinks Frederick Douglass is alive, as if he knows yeah. anything well, about and, the Civil War. By the way, Donald Trump also, one of his associated groups, MAGA Inc., just spent $4.5 million against Nikki Haley because they are worried about her. Yeah. And I'd also remind you, that man dined with neo-Nazi Nick Fuentes not that long ago, yes, so you yes, should yes, be lecturing right. anyone on I, race. I, I just want to address the point that we all just discussed about um, the protest that went on in the church. Well, I agree that perhaps that was not the right moment, I think it is something that President Biden and his administration Administration must address. Oh yeah, because if you look at um, uh, listen, that I, I think they is. they yeah. they are well, addressing. I don't know. It. I'm well, just saying going in over that there. church at that yeah, time. Yeah, no, I agree with that. But what I, I want... get making it impossible for us to travel, you know, in our in the tunnels and the and the, yeah. <laughs> I get I get all of that. Yeah, because couldn't get home but, yesterday. Exactly. Yeah. But but I, but one of the things is there's this stark divide among young voters. Um, on the Israel-Hamas um, war. And the voting bloc who really support, supported Biden in 2020 and I, over climate change says that the war in, in, in uh, Gaza is an environmental justice issue, and they're going to abandon Biden over it. I don't it. believe the other that. Thing, I don't believe These that. are just stats. That. The other yeah. thing is voters broadly disapprove 57% of the way Biden is handling this bloody, bloody war. By well, next year, it'll be over, and then we'll move on but to something else. But the other thing, else. Joy, is that it's a generational issue. You have <gasps> kids that are 18, between 18 and 29, nearly three-quarters of them disapprove of the way this administration... I know, but are they going to vote for Trump, who's going to take away 50, their abortion they rights may not and their show, voting rights? They may not show I don't... Up. I think it, that... I, beware the media. ...or how important yeah. this issue is beware to that Beware the block. media. That voting block has lots of issues that they want addressed. Yeah. Yeah. They do, and they have every right to demand that from whoever yeah. the candidate is going to be. Yeah. But I, I will say this until it's time to go vote. Beware the media telling us what we're doing. Only you know what you're doing. You know what's upsetting you, and you will discuss it when you go and make your vote. Now, there are lots of things that we all wish that the candidates would talk about, whether it's on the left or on the right. We wish they would talk about what mattered to us. Those are fights we're always... Yes, Joy, what? <laughs> what I wish is that the media would, would take these people on. I know you might have talked about it yesterday, but I wasn't here. <laughs> I'm watching Meet the Press with oh. that annoying... A Stephonic woman yeah. calling these insurrectionists on January 6th hostages. Okay, they were there voluntarily. Yeah. They're not hostages. And whoever was in that seat was Kristen Welker, did not say those are not hostages. That was disappointing because she is a, I mean, an excellent journalist. Come on, but if she you don't the confront these there. people on their lies in the media, we will lose this. She dropped the ball on that I'm interview. Sorry, no, the, 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 that's way. okay, that's all right. But I, I'm here to say it's ours to lose. <clears throat> it is this country. This is what it's all about. Either you want it to work forward thinking, you want everybody to have the ability to say how they feel, what they want, to move forward, or you don't. Or you want somebody who says, I'm going to be on day one, I'm going to be a dictator. 
who says it to you, tells you, I'm going to put you people away. I'm going to take all the journalists. I'm going to take all the gay folks. I'm going to move you all around and disappear you. <laughs> if that's the country you want, you know who to vote for. Well, if, that's not, if that's not the country you want, you have to make a decision. Well, that's what MAGA you know? wants, Debbie. That's We're what the still right in a primary. Yes, it We're may be... It, it, they it like may, that. They may like that, but the, I believe the people of the United <laughs> States will make themselves very clear. Yeah. Because people keep telling them what they're doing. Your media keeps yeah. saying, this is what you're doing.